Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the 10 types of men women should avoid dating. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking discussions. In the dating world, you'll encounter a variety of men. The great news is that many of them are wonderful, fun, and caring. However, it's important to be cautious. Because there are many types of personalities you should steer clear of to avoid being blindsided or heartbroken. Without further ado, here is the list of the 10 types of men women should avoid. Number 10, the selfish guy. Does the guy you're dating only seem to care about himself? If you're with someone who tends to put his needs first, shows little interest in you and your passions, and who considers himself to be the greatest guy on the planet, it's time to take note that you're dating someone selfish and arrogant. When a guy has an overinflated ego and tries to show you he's an expert at everything, the advice you should heed is to stop dating him. While confidence is appealing, it's not appealing to be with someone who has an overblown sense of self and who couldn't care or be bothered by your needs and desires. Number nine, the guy who puts in no effort. When it comes to dating, the guy certainly isn't the only one who should be putting in the effort. However, if you're the one who always contacts him, has to set up the plans, and frequently feels as though you have to do everything to keep your connection afloat, this is a guy you should avoid. Both you and the guy you're dating have to put in the work to spend time together and get to know each other. But when you're doing all of the giving and getting nothing in return, this isn't a healthy dynamic. If a guy seems to be indifferent when it comes to spending time with you, it's time to spend your time with someone else. Number eight. The guy who strings you along. Since there are so many different people and options in the dating pool, it's not uncommon to date someone on and off for an extended period of time. For instance, you may go out on a few dates with someone and not hear from him again until weeks later, and many times it's a late night text. In order to avoid being treated as though you're disposable by a guy who only feels like contacting you when he wants to, when he's bored, and when he's looking to hook up, you should find a guy who places a priority on having you in his life. Rather than being just another name that pops up in his phone, you should avoid this type of a guy and find someone with whom you really click. Number seven, the player. When you really like the guy you're dating, you may find yourself wanting to take your relationship to the next level. However, if you're dating a player, this next phase of your relationship may never come. Guys who are players wanna keep your relationship on a superficial level, which is why they're often vague about their whereabouts, are constantly texting others and are dismissive of the idea of introducing you to friends and family. If you're looking for a long-term committed relationship, it's important that you drop the player you're with and try to meet someone who's also looking for a deep and meaningful connection. Number six, the emotionally unavailable guy. Dating a man who is emotionally cut off and detached can have its share of challenges. He may never open up to you, share what's on his mind, or be vulnerable around you. And if you're looking for a deep and meaningful relationship, it's in your best interest to avoid an emotionally unavailable man because he'll never fully let you in. For instance, if he keeps you at arm's length and never lets his guard down around you, then your relationship can't truly progress because you'll never get to know the real person he is inside. Number five, the controlling guy. Has the guy you're dating ever told you who you can and cannot talk to or what you can and cannot wear? Controlling guys are ones who try to dominate and intimidate you, and they are often jealous and suspicious of your relationships with other people and try to keep tabs on you at every moment of the day. If you feel as though you're being bullied or manipulated by the guy you're dating, it's time to cut off contact immediately, as this is a form of abuse. You are your own person, and the only one who gets to decide what you can and cannot do is you. Number four, the liar. It's challenging and emotionally taxing to date someone you can't count on and who isn't honest or forthright with you. When the guy you're dating is a liar, he'll often make promises he can't keep, make up stories that aren't true, and keep you in the dark about who he really is. When a guy freely and willingly deceives you, this is an automatic red flag that he can't be trusted, especially since trust is at the cornerstone of every happy, fulfilling, and healthy relationship. In order for your connection to flourish, you have to be able to rely on him as your partner. And if you're dating a guy who is prone to lying and making things up, it's time to say goodbye. Number three, the guy that's not ready for anything serious. It's tempting to think we can change this guy's mind. Once he sees how wonderful you are, there's no way he could not fall in love, right? 
But if he says right off the bat that he's not looking for a relationship, believe him. Instead, find a guy that won't pass up an opportunity to call you his girlfriend. If you still date this type of guy, make sure you are also not looking for anything serious or you will surely get your heart broken. Number two, gets really angry really quickly guy. When a guy's reactions are consistently overboard for what's appropriate, it's a big red flag. I think most of us have an idea of what would be an appropriate response to something. And of course we all get angry from time to time. But people who get super angry, you wanna stay away from that. Does he snap at a waiter who gets his order wrong? Talk down to his coworkers? Ultimately, you want someone who is responsive, not reactive. Someone who can understand where their feelings are coming from and act accordingly, because eventually his anger is going to be directed to you. Number one, the cheater. Dating someone who has cheated in the past can be a recipe for disaster. Here are some reasons why. Cheaters demonstrate a disregard for their partner's feelings and boundaries. They prioritize their own desires over the well-being of others, indicating a lack of respect for relationships and the people involved. Research suggests that people who cheat in one relationship are more likely to cheat in subsequent relationships. This implies that cheating is a pattern of behavior rather than a one-time mistake. Cheaters may not have fully processed their motivations for cheating or taken responsibility for their actions. This can lead to a rebound situation where they seek out new partners to fill a void rather than working on personal growth and accountability. Dating someone with a cheater's past can create ongoing uncertainty and anxiety, as you'll always wonder if they'll cheat again. While it's possible for someone to change and grow, the risks associated with dating a cheater are significant. It's essential to prioritize respect, honesty, and trust in a relationship. If someone has cheated in the past, it may be wise to reevaluate whether they're a suitable partner for you. Remember, once a cheater, always a cheater, unless they've demonstrated significant personal growth and accountability. That's the end of our list. Join us in the comments and let us know if you have dated these types of men. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more thought provoking content. Hey everyone, I want to chime into this topic to give a male's perspective. Women often have misconceptions about what bad or evil men look like. The fact is, you can't judge a man by looking at him. There were tons of handsome men who turned out to be a nightmare for their girlfriends and wives. Trust your gut and not your eyes. And choose carefully. Your life could depend on it. Known serial killers, murderers and rapists, like Ted Bundy, the Menendez brothers, Brock Turner, Jeffrey Dahmer, and um, Jeremy Meeks. You remember Jeremy Meeks? Many years ago, he was arrested. He was a convicted felon. His mugshot was all over the news and women were going crazy over him. And imagine this guy's a, a felon and women are swooning over his looks. Now, I'm not saying the guy's a bad looking guy. The guy's obviously a handsome guy. My point is that don't dwell on what people look like. Don't put too much stock into that. The most important thing when you're trying to date someone is knowing the type of person they are on a deep level. Is this person a good person? Does he respect women? That's the kind of questions you need to know. Does he have any ambition? What's his plan for life? What's his plan for you if you should end up in a relationship? Another thing to find out is, does he have a rap sheet? Has he ever gotten convicted of assault? Have you ever gotten convicted of murder? These are the things that you need to find out before getting involved with someone. Because once you get involved with them, a lot of times it becomes too late because that psychopath thinks that he owns you. If he can't have you, then nobody can. So that's why you have to slow down and make a wise choice when picking a partner. A lot of women got killed by Ted Bundy because they thought he was handsome and charming. They didn't realize that that guy was the devil coming towards them. The Menendez brothers actually killed their parents. And once they got convicted, there were tons of women sending them letters in jail. There are a lot of criminals in jail, famous and people who are not famous, who get letters in jail from women. Imagine a man raping and killing a child or a woman. And while he's in prison serving life, there are other women trying to contact him to marry him, send him money, send him naked pictures. That's the world we're living in. Don't be like one of those women who don't value themselves. Stop focusing on surface level things. Now, we all want to be with someone who's attractive, right? But that shouldn't distract you from finding someone who has good intentions. Someone who's not trying to use you for sex or money. 
someone who has no intentions of taking advantage of you or abusing you. The first thing you should worry about is if this man is a good man. When I say a good man, I mean a good-natured man, respectable and honorable. That's the first thing. Not if he's six feet tall and if he has green eyes. These things don't matter in the grand scheme of relationships. What's more important is finding someone who's sane and who's not trying to use and abuse you. As if this person is someone you want to trust with your heart, with your safety, or even around your kids. What I don't understand about some women is how do they get attracted to men like that? Men who have raped multiple women, killed multiple women. How do you get attracted to someone like that just because of the way they look? The best way to get to know someone is to date them without having sex. First, you need to find out more about them with pointed questions and deep level conversations. Questions like, what do you think is a woman's role in a relationship? And listen, see what he responds, see what he says, and ask him more of those type of questions, those deep level questions. And if he cannot answer a deep level question, or he gives you a surface level answer, that's a red flag. There are a lot of bad men walking around trying to date women. And it's your job to vet and figure out if this person is someone that you want to end up in a relationship with. Because it could mean life or death, sadly. So, my tips would be go to the social media and check all their posts. Go through like a whole year of posts if, if, if it's possible. Take that time. If you really think this is someone you want to have a relationship with, take an hour and do that. And see the kind of posts he's liking. Try to figure out the type of man he really is. And try to see what he thinks about women. See what kind of relationship he has with his mother. See what kind of relationship he has with his other family. And if he has a bad relationship with his parents, find out why. And see if those answers are sufficient for you to have a relationship with that person. Don't jump into bed. Don't get emotionally attached. Don't get sexually attached to men you do not know. Because as I said, this could mean life or death. And ladies, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't believe anything in this video or anything that I am saying, I want you to do some homework. Go on Amazon Prime or go on Netflix and just type in true crime. Watch shows like my crazy ex watch forensic files or watch any other true crime series now true crime is not reality tv this is not the kardashians where it's all fake true crime is real life reenactments and a lot of it has the families of the victims talking about the cases the detectives and you get all the information women being abused and murdered is an epidemic in america so wake up don't think that Dating is just fun and games. Because I'm telling you right now, it's not fun and games when you end up in a situation where you're fighting for your life. When you meet someone, they're going to present themselves as if they're normal and um, happy and giving and, and charming. And eventually, once they get deep in a relationship with you, you're going to see their true colors. You need to take time and learn about someone before getting involved with them. Because let me tell you something. Men don't have to worry about being killed in a relationship. I've never have to really worry about, hey, is a woman going to kill me? Because the statistics show that most women don't kill men. When there's a divorce or there's a breakup, men are not in fear of their lives. It's just not something that happens. Women are not as violent as men. I'm not saying that women have never killed men. Yes, that's definitely happened. I'm trying to tell you that 99.9% .9 of the time, it's the men that are killing the women. So if your life is on the line, you're the one that need to do the background check on this person. The men, they, they don't have to because their life is not in danger. In fact, I want you to watch a specific series and a specific episode. There's a series called Deadline Crime with Tamron Hall. And it's currently on Discovery+. Plus, and I want you to watch season four, episode four. It's called If I Can't Have You. And it's about a girl called Tiana Notice. A 25-year-old graduate student who was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, James Carter II. And there were two mistakes that she made. The first one is that she did not find out anything about this guy before she got involved with him. She believed everything he said. The places he said he would work in was a lie. He said he didn't have any kids. That was a lie. And he said a lot of things to her that was a lie. And she didn't verify any of the things that he said. This was in the days of MySpace, which was a social media platform, just like Facebook and Twitter and all the other platforms. So back in those days, you could have seen people's posts. She could have done some type of research to find out more about this guy, but she didn't do anything. She just took his word for it. Whatever he said, she believed it and she got involved with him. What she found out about this guy eventually 
was that he abused his ex and he was totally unstable. So the second mistake she made is that she did not move from where she was living once she realized he was stalking her, he was going to the cops and lying about her. She did not move. So she changed her phone number, she changed her email, she got multiple restraining orders, but she didn't move. He knows exactly where she was living and he went over there and he killed her. The point I'm trying to make is that if Tiana had took a moment to do some research, find out more about James Carter before she got in a relationship with him, she would have been alive today. But she never took the time to find out about this guy before she got emotionally and sexually involved with him. All across the US, hundreds of thousands of women are being abused, they're being beaten up, and a lot of them are being killed. And it's happening practically on a daily basis. So don't be the next victim by not finding out more about the man that you're potentially gonna date or the man that you're actually dating right now. This channel is dedicated to defending good people and speaking out against violence of innocent victims. Join us on this journey to raise awareness so we can all fight against the evil people in the world. If you know anyone who is in an abusive relationship, help them any way you can. Let them know that they are not alone. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.